Okay. Uh, from the internet, Jack, how do you combat the strands of racism in the Republican Party? Now, Jack, you used to be what? The something, the Avenger, the yeah. Southern Avenger, the yeah, Dixie? There was a controversy about that. I've, right. I've had to wrestle with my own past and some things. Um, you know, this Trump phenomenon, what's bothered me the most is I, I think it's true what Jeremy said earlier. Um, there are people out there who are openly bigots or hateful and all the, I mean, I don't think anybody that says anybody, something that's politically incorrect is necessarily that, as you've noted, but there are a lot of people out there who are straight up hateful. They don't like minorities, they don't like gay people. And I think Trump, and I don't think he intentionally did this, I think he's just being himself, has opened the floodgates. <laughs> for, I, I, I honestly think, I don't think he's that intentional, I think he's just being himself. But I think people who feel that way feel that they can freely express those things in ways that are not good for our society and not good for the country. Mm -hmm. I think that's a problem. How do you combat it? You'd be better than that. I'm a conservative, I'm a libertarian, but I'm positive. I look for the best in individuals. I don't group people together. I don't say, you know, that's the worst thing you can do to demonize human beings is to group them together, say these people are bad, and not judge them by their individual worth and human dignity. So. Well. A, a, a speech Michael Moore could have given. <laughs> Michael, would you consider making a film on the media and its influence on election results? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody should make that film. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm the, I'm the person to do it, um, but uh, I, I, you know, actually, I wanted to at the beginning of this election season. I was going to just kind of secretly film, go on a number of these shows, not, not your show, of course, but other shows, and just kind of let, show people what happens behind the scenes, how this comes together. And uh, I was just talking to Scott, your producer. That discussion between you and Jeremy that took place, you never see that on the mainstream broadcast networks, you know, where you guys really got into some very serious, you have a serious disagreement. Wait, wait, HBO is kind of a mainstream broadcast network. <laughs> oh, I mean, really? You think so? HBO? I think I don't think HBO is mainstream at all. Really? Yes. Have you have seen you, Game of Thrones? Have you not? You think that's mainstream? Game I think we're Thrones? on a mainstream network. I don't think I do a mainstream show. I, that's okay. the difference. But that's, right. you know. Right. Okay. You're the father of dragons. <laughs> <laughs> But what, I mean, what, let me ask you a broader question. What do you think is the future of documentaries? Because, I mean, things have changed in the movie business a lot since you started making them. I mean, I don't know in this day and age whether people, are, they don't even, I see, I see most of my movies when I'm on the road doing stand-up on the weekend in the hotel. And, and they're like, you know, the, recently in theaters. And they're like, sometimes they're like, wow, these are big stars. And it never even saw the light of day in a theater because the only movies that seem to open now are about robots punching each other. Well, let me ask yeah. a question back to you. Why haven't you made more documentaries? Because that's your thing. I no, 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 I'm sorry, but you made no, no, your I, film, your one film, no is still one of the top 15 yes, largest yes. grossing documentaries of all time. Because that, but I always said from the, I said before it, I said after it, I don't want to be Michael Moore, only he can do what he does. This is the one topic that I wanted to tackle. Religion is stupid uh -huh. right. and there is no God. Right. You weren't going to do that one. <laughs> Right. Well, you did a great job with yeah. it, but 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 no, we, it, you and I want to do a well. You, well, movie together. we shouldn't. Yes. Is this? Is, are we still live on the internet right now? We're still live. <laughs> right. I mean, it doesn't Somewhere. matter because we can't get this thing going. Well, but, but you. But the truth is, yes. folks. Bill yeah, and we, I. Yeah, we do want. have a secret plan. Yeah, we do. And <laughs> we've not discussed it publicly. And and we're not going to release our 28 no, pages we, to because, you, sir. Because <laughs> we, no, we want to do a movie called uh, The Kings of Atheism. I, th I thought, you know. Okay, there it's out. Right? There it's out. It's out. Well, what could, what, what's the worst thing that could happen? That we get it made? <laughs> As opposed to now when we're not? No, but you've just told the Almighty that we're going to do this, and now we're not gonna you do and it. I have to survive no, the no, next six months. No, no. I, I want to. Remember the Kings of Comedy? <laughs> they did the Kings of Comedy. There was like four, right? four uh, the Queens of African comedy. American. Correct. And then they did the Latino Kings. I yes. Think. For the kings of atheism. The kings of atheism. And we can't get anybody we want to sign up for We're the going. To, we are going to have four of America's yeah, top comedians. No, I, I'm going to film it, and we're going to travel through the Bible Belt putting on whew, these shows. Oh, it's so awesome. <laughs> and, and we are going know, to live to the end of the production. Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, the first person I wanted to do it was my fellow atheist and boyfriend, Seth MacFarlane. I can't get him to commit. Maybe you people could. Yeah. Uh, he will do it. He will do it. Well, we can't get him to do it. Maybe they will. <laughs> it's, we're yeah, gonna... If we got Ricky we, Gervais, right, me, right. Sarah Silverman. Sarah Silverman. Mm -hmm. And others, I Seth think, are. Seth will be an and amazing. And others will come out, Kings. too. Yes. Yeah. You, listen, Bill, this is a movement that you actually are it would, responsible it would, it would be for. Such a great movement. You're the most public so person funny. who, for the last decade or so, has, has been at the forefront of questioning this. And, and you did it when it was not popular, when somebody at HBO, this mainstream network, Ron, must have said, Bill. <laughs> You know that's well uh, ABC before that ABC was even did, matter right. that was Disney. But, well, but now, but, but now, now people are. But the great thing is that you directing it is that you're not an atheist. That's great. Yes. Well, that's, that will, that's so where the awesome. humor will come in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the humor said, will come in in a lot of places. I will ride the bus but, with yes. the comedians, you and your Don't atheist friends, and you'll have ten days. Right. You'll have ten days to convert me to your debauchery, basically. So. <laughs> So all everybody has to do is contact Seth, Ricky, and Sarah and tell them to do our movie. And then right. we're, we're done. And Ari, get, get us the money to do it. All right. <laughs> Jeremy, does Edward Snowden seeking asylum in an autocratic state like Russia damage his credibility as a champion of human rights? No. Well, I mean, the first problem with that question is that it's based on total bullshit. Um, Edward, <laughs> Edward Snowden uh, was seeking to go to Latin America, and when he was en route uh, to Russia to then catch a flight to Latin America, the United States canceled his passport. Uh, and, and he still remains without a passport. So he didn't he's choose. Still in Russia. He, he, of course, he's still in Russia. I, I, I chatted with him recently. He wrote the foreword to our, uh, How's our, he doing? our, our book. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, look, his I mean, his girlfriend I, joined in there? She did. Okay, and, so um, we, she's got a girl. Yes, he has, and his his same girlfriend, who was like under the sort of you know full force of the uh, national right. security state initially, because he didn't. It, it appears he didn't tell her anything about this before he. They're in Moscow. He fled the scene, and yeah, and they. She moved there, the and she's, she's living there. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, Russia is a is a reprehensible, uh, human rights violating, sure, autocratic society. Uh, however, uh, Edward Snowden, I, I I truly support him and believe that his entire motive in doing this was a just one. And, and that is rank propaganda that's used against him to imply he's somehow a treasonous ass who's giving secrets to the FSB, he, the Russian intelligence service. He didn't bring any documents there. He didn't choose Russia. The United right. States chose Russia. And, you know, the question is, did they choose it knowing that that would be the way that they could hammer him, or did they really believe that they were going to uh, somehow be able to snatch him if he got on Evo Morales' plane, which they forced to ground, or another nation's aircraft? Well, this question is right in line with that. Have we miscalculated how to deal with Russia and its influence on the conflict in the Middle East? Well, who's Pass, that I guess. <laughs> um, That's for anybody, but we don't, have to, no. we don't have to answer it. Yeah. The oh. Internet ain't the boss of us. <laughs> You've stumped us, Internet. <clears throat> you win dinner for two at Pepe's. <laughs> it's like Stump the Band, but with the panel. Uh, Bob, is the lack of civic education to blame for the state of politics and discourse in this country? That's, I, I think would... it's a significant factor. Yeah, they used to teach civics. We essentially stopped teaching civics in the right. United States in the 1970s. People don't even know how government works. Yeah. I don't know who should be in it. Frankly, Donald Trump uh, didn't have much of a background in civics. Therefore, he thinks that he's going to be elected to be George III, not the President of the United States, uh, and would govern like that. Uh, uh, I, I think one of the most critical issues to deal with the Trumps, uh, both personally and their philosophy of government, uh, is to reintroduce serious study of what it means to be a citizen in a democracy into our schools. What he said, a place from it's which gone. it's virtually it's vanished. Gone. It's, it's totally gone. gone. It's gone. And history, and largely as right. well. Yet every school day still begins in most schools with the Pledge of Allegiance to the sure. flag, and then nothing about what that means or what it stands for or what we're supposed to be doing about it. And one of the scenes I actually cut out of my film, we went to Austria. Austria is one of a half a dozen countries now that have lowered the voting age to 16 because what they found is, is by getting kids to vote starting in high school, they bring candidates in, they bring the registrar in, they get them going then and interested in it, 
they've now, the statistics show, their 18 to 25-year-olds vote at a higher percentage than ours do in other countries where the voting age is 18. Well, look, Michael, well, what they're voting for in Austria is not particularly appealing at the moment. They've just had a big far-right gains in local elections <laughs> well, in Austria. So well, you know, whether but Scotland, th that but you know this, though, well, Scotland, sure. the voting age was lowered to 16 to allow 16-year-olds to vote last year on whether or not Scotland should remove itself Mike, from the UK. We are not them. I mean, our college kids are more like high school kids. 16-year-olds? Are you yeah. kidding? Yeah. But we've got to start somewhere to make them to aspire to something. You know, like, we expect this. And it's just, it's just like driver ed at 16. Okay. Well. They should start to learn about this process and be involved in it. Yeah. Uh, and it's I not just Bieber. it's not just the issue of lowering the voting. He's rate. a Canadian. They can't. There have been aggressive efforts to keep uh, the current uh, 18 to 21 year olds from voting. For instance, in my state, uh, you can vote early in a senior center, uh, in a library, every place except on a university campus. It's right. a very uh, specific effort to restrain sure. and constrict uh, the youth uh, participation in voting. The Republican Attorney General in Michigan got a law passed that uh, prohibits students in Michigan from voting on election day at their college campus. They have to leave college that day and drive. If you're in Ann Arbor and you live in Traverse City or Flint or whatever, you have to drive there on election day or you have to figure out how to get an absentee ballot a month before that. You can't vote where you're going to school. They, they, they did that so that they could, again, gerrymander out thousands. I mean, in Michigan State, you've got 50,000 students there. You know, and, and yet Michigan State is represented by a Republican in Congress because those 50,000 students couldn't vote in the place where they live and go to school. This, is, this goes on all over the country. Right, yeah. It's never written about or talked about. And, and you're absolutely right, Bob. This is, this, it's, I think it's a big problem. But then you also you, add to that, that that you have real voter disenfranchisement that continues, violations of the Voting Rights Act in African-American communities and poor communities. I mean, this is still rampant. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it really, there really is a, a sort of Jim Crow racist element I, that continues on with our elections. I wonder if Senator Graham, though, would support a bill that said that Every congressperson has to wear for their first day in office uh, a suit that has uh, logos of the top 50 corporations that funded their campaign, like NASCAR yeah. suits. Yeah. That would yeah, be a great civics lesson. lesson. You did that? I did that in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Of course, yeah, you've been yeah. ripped yeah. off yeah. many or, times since. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. well, you should look at the Australian model, where if you don't vote, you get a tax hit. I mean, it's the only country in the world where voting is effectively mandatory. But do we and want people voting? Yeah, who, why not? Why who, shouldn't who, you go? And if you don't who like... Who are completely or, uninformed? You go and you spoil your ballot. If you don't like any of the options there, you spoil your ballot. At least you've shown the civic... There are too many countries in the world that don't have the right to vote. If we have the right to vote, we should protect it. And if that well, means giving people you, some you know kind of tax Do you know that 60% of... All they have to do is spoil again, their ballot. It's this not is an a, infringement this is America. of their rights. Do you know that 60% of the people in this country believe the no Noah's Ark story is literally true. <laughs> yeah. I don't want them voting. Then we need more education. Yeah. The senator is right. right. And, half, and half, we got to go. Half of that 60%. Thank you very much, right. everybody. <laughs>